Welcome. In a previous video, I did an unboxing of an ESP32C3 microcontroller board, and I'll put a link in the description of that video, and I'll also put a link in the description to this hardware on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So as of the time I'm recording this, they've been sold out of this microcontroller, but I'll also put a link below to a different one that's similar. So in this video, I'm going to run the Hello World code on it, and I'll be following along with the instructions. So this isn't necessarily a tutorial, this is just to give people an idea of what to expect if they do this themselves. And maybe I'll run into some issues and I'll solve them. So I'm doing this on a Mac, it's going to be a little different on Windows and Linux, but there might be some things that are the same. So I've searched here for ESP32C3 manual, and I don't want this first link, I want the second one here. And I'll put a link below to this. And one more thing, I'll put a link below to my playlist where you can find my other videos. As of recording this, it will be two videos, but hopefully I do more. So this first page here talks about it, it shows the different components. If we scroll down a little bit, there's a diagram here that's pretty helpful, which goes over the pinouts. So you might want to bookmark this page or this manual itself in case you need to reference this someday. But I'm actually going to skip all this, and on the left side, I'm going to go to installation step by step. So the first thing it's talking about are the prerequisites, and it has links for Windows, Linux, and Mac. I'll right click on this Mac OS one and open that in a new tab. So the first line here wants you to install pip, which is a Python thing. So I'll just copy that. I'll open up a terminal. I'll paste that in. When you run sudo the first time, it's going to ask for your password, so you want to type that in. Okay, so it says it's already there. So next we need to install CMake and Ninja, and it says if you have Homebrew, you can run this. If you run Macports, you can run this line. So this may seem like a little thing, but if you haven't installed Macports, that's a big thing you need to install. And I've done a number of videos on that. You can search for Rick Makes Mac Ports in the search bar and you should come up with it. I have some different versions for different versions of the Mac OS. You can also find instructions on the Mac Ports website. But in order to install Mac Ports, you need to install Xcode. So if you go on your Mac and go to your App Store, you can search for Xcode there and you can download and install that. And then you can go to the Mac Ports website and install Mac Ports. So once you have that done, you can go into your terminal and you want to type in sudo space port space self update and hit enter. And that will update the package list for the ports. And if you've used Linux at all, this is similar to app get update. And I haven't updated this for a while, so there may be some updates. So I'm actually going to update the packages too. And this isn't in the instructions, but it's just a good idea to do that once you install Mac ports that you have everything up to date. Okay, so it's really nice here. They tell you exactly what you need to run. So you run sudo space port space upgrade space outdated. Hit enter here. So I forgot to mention earlier that I'm running this on a 2012 MacBook Pro. This is running Catalina, I think it is. But this, I've done this on Big Sur on Intel. I tried to run it on my Mac with the M1 processor and I did not get it to work. There were too many problems with it. Uh, hopefully someday that will be fixed, but for now it works better on Intel. Now, for some reason you only have an M1 Mac, you might want to get uh, maybe a Raspberry Pi computer or an old PC and run Linux on it, or even run Windows. Um, it may be the best option. Okay, that's finished now. So per the instructions, we want to install CMake, Ninja, and DFU Util. So I'll copy this line. It says the following dependencies will be installed, libusb, I'll hit yes. Okay, that's finished. Now it talks about installing Python 3, and if I run this command, I'm pretty sure it's already here. Yep. So I'm done with these instructions now for the Mac. I'll close this. I'll scroll down. So now we can install the ESP IDF and it's the IoT Development Framework. That's what IDF stands for. I'll try and get both of these on the screen at the same time. So the first thing we want to do is create this ESP directory. And since we have a tilde here, that means we're putting it in the home directory. Now we'll use CD to go into that directory. And now we'll run this git clone. So what this will do is this will download the software from GitHub onto our computer. Okay, that's completed. 
I'll scroll down here past the windows. Next we have setup tools. So it has windows here, now it has Mac. I'll use these instructions. I'll type cd space tilde forward slash esp forward slash esp dash idf. I'll hit enter. I'll type period forward slash install dot sh and I'll let that run. It says all done. Now you can run period space period forward slash export period sh. I'll run that. Go back up to my instructions here. It has alternate file downloads. Scroll past this. Next is setting up environmental variables. So I'll run this command here. And now it has a command to put into our profile. And this is because I'm running bash. So if I type echo space dollar sign uppercase shell, it says bin bash. I'm not sure how to make an alias in the Z shell. I know the newer versions of Mac OS use Z shell. You can probably Google for that, but I do want to do this. So I'll copy this line here. And in my terminal, I'll type open space dash E space tilde forward slash period bash underscore profile. I'll hit enter. I'll go to the bottom of this file and I'll paste in that line. I'll type command S to save, command W to close. Now I'll type source space tilde forward slash period bash underscore profile. And that will load my profile. So this bash profile loads every time you open up a terminal. I just ran source so I don't have to close and reopen my terminal. So now we'll go to step five, start a project. I'll go to the ESP directory. I can just type CD space period period to go back a directory. And now I want to copy this hello world to the current directory. So what we're doing here is in the examples get started directory, there's a project called hello world. And with this command, we're copying it to this ESP directory. So if I type ls here, we have ESP IDF and hello world. This way we can delete this later or copy a new version if we want to you know, play around with it or whatever, but we still have the original. So I'll scroll down, it says connect your device. So I'll clear my screen here, I'll type ls space forward slash dev forward slash cu asterisk I'll hit enter. I don't have anything here. It's a nice idea to run this before you plug it in, but now I'm going to plug it in and I'll run it again. So this way you can see the contrast between before and after. So before we had the Bluetooth and now we have this cu.usb serial 1420. So I will select that and copy it. I'll scroll down here to configure, clear my screen. It wants me to go into the hello world directory. So I'll type cd space hello underscore world. I'll type idf.py space set dash target space ESP32C3. I'll hit enter. Now I want to type idf.py space menu config. I'll hit enter there. This will take me into this menu. So in here you can set up different things on the microcontroller, but it says for this project we don't need to. So I'll just hit Q to exit out of there. And here it says build the project. So I'll type idf.py space build. I'll hit enter. And this will build the project and it will take a little bit of time, which is kind of crazy because this is just doing nothing. It's just going to print hello world. Okay, that's finished. So next is flash onto the device. So I can type idf.py space dash p space, and then I'll paste in that command for the serial port. So if you don't remember what that was, we typed ls space forward slash dev forward slash cu asterisk, and this came up. I'll type space and then flash. I'll hit enter, and this will send it to the microcontroller. Scroll down here. Okay, so the next section is monitor. So we want to type a similar command to before, but instead of flash, you want to type in monitor. So I'll hit enter here. And now we can see it says hello world right there. And this will count down 10 seconds. It will restart the whole thing and write hello world again. Now to exit out of this, you want to type control and then right bracket. So it's not control C like you would typically do with a, an application. So there's a note here, and this is a very nice note. It tells you you can do both things at the same time. So if I look at my history here, we ran this build command, we ran flash and then monitor. So I'll clear my screen here. We can actually run build, flash, and monitor all on one line. 
and this will do all of the parts. And here it's running. So if I go into the software here, and we have hello world main, I'll type open space dash e, and then hello world main dot c. We can go into our hello world statement here, and we can type ESP32 C3, and I'll save and close this. I'll go back a directory with cd dot dot, and I'll run this build flash monitor again. So now you can see we have the updated command. It says hello ESP32 C3 world. So the subsequent times that you recompile will be faster because it's going to cache a lot of that stuff that it already compiled. So that's all for this tutorial here, I think. Yep. So if something gets screwed up, you can type in idf.py space, and then you can type in full clean. And this will clean everything out. Now if we run the build command again, this will take a long time again because we cleaned everything out. Okay, there, now it's running. So let's exit out of here. I'll open up a new terminal. So imagine that was the end of the day, we closed it out, the next day we want to get back in here. We can go to our ESP directory, we can go back to our Hello World project. Now if I run this command, it's not going to work. It doesn't recognize the idf.py. We need to run the get underscore idf command, and that's what we put that alias in there for. So if I run this, this will set up our environment ready to go, and we can run this command again. And we're up and running in just seconds. So at this point, you can write your own software and upload it to this thing. This is about as much as I know at this point. I've gone a little bit further, but these files are written in C. So if you know C, you might have a little bit of a heads up on doing this. I mean, it's not too hard like I modified this. That's not very difficult to do. I haven't gotten into reading the GPIO pins and stuff like that yet. So hopefully I'll figure that out and I can make a video on that. But I thought I'd record this. Maybe it'll be some help to some people. Maybe other people will be able to help me. You know, if you have any suggestions, you can drop those in a comment below. But that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.